So I basically just say, I, I'm an oil painter, and they are abstract paintings. Usually they don't ask anything more. <laughs> Wait, how would you describe my painting? I started painting when I was extremely young. I had a blood virus when I was eight years old that kept me uh, isolated. I couldn't go to school. I was, you know, bedridden. But a neighbor gave me one of those oil painting kits. It, it had a physicalness to it so that when I was painting the views out my window, you know, if I was painting flowers, those flowers stuck out from the board. So it had a sculptural quality. So I've been an oil painter literally since I was a child and just love it. Before coming to New York, there weren't paintings available at that time in uh, my area. As far as I was concerned, art ended with the Impressionists. That's what I love to look at in books. And then I come to New York to go to Pratt Institute. Everything, everything opened up. And one of the first things I did is I heard about galleries on 57th Street. At that point, Betty Parsons and Sidney Janis were across the hall from each other. And I first walk into Sidney Janis, and Sidney had an a abstract expressionist show, uh, and it was exciting. Well, across the hall at Betty Parsons, of course, it was a black rectangles, and I thought that was going to be the background. They were going to put something on it. And I went, uh, as I left, I went downstairs, and I ran into a classmate. And he said, well, what do you think of the show at Betty Parsons? I was embarrassed to say that I didn't think it was hung yet, so I went back up. And I walked into the room, and I walked close, and it was the first time I saw Ad Reinhardt, and bells went off. It was, oh, I'm sort of excited even telling this story. It was a, a gestalt moment of art can go anywhere. It was those paintings opening up my own mind in terms of self-discovery and to find my way. And he was telling me, you can go very personal. You have to go within yourself to find your way. And that was my real true opening to abstract painting. One of the teachers that I had at Pratt that meant an incredible amount to me is, um, uh, a painter by the name of Walter Murch, a, a great painter and a great teacher. And he taught in a very oblique way. It turned out he was showing at Betty Parsons. And then to follow through, so there's Ad Reinhardt, there's Walter Murch. My first exhibition in New York was at Betty Parsons. She was an extraordinary art dealer. You know, she realized we're both ocean people, we're both nature people, and that we couldn't spend all of our time in New York City. So she had a, a wonderful house on St. Martin, and she insisted that we go there for a few months, uh, for a number of years, to work there, but just to be with the ocean and to swim every day, and I have solitude. My early paintings were eccentric geometric shapes. For me, they were visions. All of these paintings are visions. You know, it's like I start with nothing. I start with a blank canvas. I don't have any real concept of well, I'm not a systemic painter. For me, I want each painting to be an individual. I like to look in very close 
And when I see people do that with my painting, I know they're on a trip with my painting. Especially mine are quite textured. And not only that, but they're so layered. So I have to leave what I want that started maybe two months ago. I want each painting to take me on a journey. There are great painters from all times that have gone beyond just, you know, what it seems to be. I only work in four colors. That's it. And the proportion, which is always an off-square horizontal. And the reason it's off-square horizontal is because of the right-hand bar. I want the painting to feel square. Now, if I didn't make it off-square horizontal and had the right-hand bar, it would feel vertical. I don't want that. I want it to feel square. Feeling square was more important to me than the actual measurement of it being square. And aside from how I came to these colors, as, is I really believe it, these are the colors of, of the human species from all time, from all places. I have traveled extensively. I travel for research, and it's been very important in terms of infusing my work with that connection with different cultures. The other thing that's had a tremendous impact on me, I was very formally involved with Zen Buddhism for years, 24 hours. You eat meditating, you walk meditating, you sit meditating. There is no stop in terms of it. And after you sort of release what you've come with and you get there, it is such an incredible opening experience. Your cushion becomes your home. Your blankness becomes your hearth, and you're warm, and you have visions. If one has a propensity to be a monk, then you become a monk through Zen. If you have a propensity to be a painter, then you're a painter through Zen. And there was a point where I realized that what I had gained from Zen, the focus and concentration. I am a painter, and that comes into my painting. And you know, there was a, a, an exhibition at the Museum of Natural History in New York a, a number of years ago of cave art. And they had the natural pigments that was used in the cave paintings. And it was red, black, <laughs> yellow, and white. And I thought, yes, I'm part of that history. I'm a cave artist. <laughs>